Greetings! Welcome to our show, Ghosts Are Near, where we discuss various aspects of the paranormal and paranormal exploration. I am your host, Keith Johnson, founder of Near. With me is my co-host, Sandra Johnson, co-founder of Near. I am that. Hey there. Introduce my illustrious co-host, Lisa Duwalaby, and Father Bob Bailey. Welcome, studio audience. Well, Long time no see. <laughs> exactly. I have everybody's attention. I'd like to wish our friend Allison Oborn, a paranormal field investigator, a very happy birthday. By the time the show is aired, it'll be a very belated birthday, okay. but um, happy birthday, Allison. Happy birthday, Allison. Happy birthday, Allison. Well, tonight we're going to be showing highlights of Unicon in Pennsylvania, 2008. And this is kind of will whet your appetite for the next Unicon. So, we have a lot of footage to show. If we can get right into that, away we go. heavier than, than normal, that might potentially be demonic, and she said that she would rather not. She was not, didn't feel she was ready to step back from that. Now, obviously, she could have been involved in something very, very dramatic on that episode, but she did the wise thing. She chose to step back, and uh, until somebody feels they're ready or they're being guided, they're ready for this, not just to jump into it. So I think just the fact that she said that is a very, very wise decision, and it's a good thing. Example of that. So Katrina was stupid enough to still do it. I was there, but what you did is because he had the car surgery and Ryan and Alfie and Sarah, they know they can take it into the but they know it's not a smart idea to bring in a newbie and like, ooh, it's the one I just not very great. So um as I say that I went I had a Monday about three. And I from there, and I helped another friend that introduced the case. Are you saying that Vegas are safe against the body? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we heard it here, folks. <laughs> What's your opinion? Well, first and foremost, I don't understand nor do I agree with the fact that anybody out there thinks that demonology is for the glamorous. I don't mean, even when I watch the shows, they don't appear as glamorous at all. It, it's stressful, it's tiring, it's it's, uh, I mean, I think we try to make it very clear we don't want to do these cases. Um, I don't see anything glamorous about it. I don't understand, I guess, why, where people are getting that message from. That being a demonologist is just cool. You go in there, you fix some ads, you're here, that's not how it works. Um, I think that it's something that's more of a religious calling. I have heard of a few people who are 18, 19 years old who claim to be the demonologists of their group, and I just don't understand how, I mean, I mean, there's no official association that gives out demonology cards or anything, but still, I just don't agree with it. <laughs> Actually, there's someone in our group who came in, and he had a, he had a business club as a demonologist, and we were like, what the hell is this kid's deal? But well, I said it on a card, it must be right. <laughs> you know, I guess so, you know, not, not in our group, so we don't really agree with that, and, you know, I'm not a demonologist. I have never claimed to be a demonologist. I actually very made it very clear to people I do not want to be a demonologist, which is why we can bring in people like Ed Lorraine Warren and Keith and Reverend Calder, people who... Did you just break this? You're bringing Ed Warren on the episode this season? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Ed Lorraine Warren. <laughs> 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 I'm not an Alex. You want to chime in? I mean, you I'm can... sorry. I'm not Halloween special. <laughs> That's what they're craving, kicking demons ass and That would be kind of cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> who have the most bias against psychic phenomena. Physicists are the most pro-psychic phenomena. 
We do that. It should be the other way around, but it's not. So there's an educational gap here. There are opportunities, but people actually, unfortunately, do need to actually read the literature. And there's an easy to get stuff. I want to talk about some of the stuff tonight. The Google book stuff, some of the stuff, by the way, the stuff from the early 1800s, is really cool reading. It's much, I think it's some of the best ghost stories I have ever read. It's incredible stuff that they've actually written. Some of these guys have written. And these are written, but these are not ghost hunters per se. These guys were guys who, just, who created the x-ray machine, who discovered certain certain elements. These are physicists. These are other folks who actually have good writing all over their Yeah. Yeah. It's, so how many people here have gone to sell cell phones that they've had sitting on their shelves since they bought it and haven't opened it up? So we learn by osmosis. Just one of you, all the rest of you, right? Have to put it on your pillow yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I would say, like, look, I mean, there's so much, there's, there's great amounts, there's great materials out there. The whole, you know, Michelle was telling us about Google Books, but like, if we really want to advance the field, let's start with the pastors. There's so much history, and there are institutes out there still that are trying to stay alive. Um, I, it kind of pains me to see how, you know, we're getting more popular even, you know, Ryan and all these other great institutes that are just kind of falling apart and that have really spent decades trying to do research. I think these institutes need our help. Um, the Lion Institute, the SPR, SPR, I think there's quite a number of them that, uh, you know, Lloyd and other people who mentioned. Great resources, great mentors. They've come to some great educational um, conferences. You know. Now, I don't think that I'm going to walk through here in a Bella Lugosi case, unless I'm in the next grade ball and I'm having a little fun with myself. So I think that as we explore anything fringe, and as we delve into the paranormal, inevitably it takes us into to witchcraft, it takes us into shamanism, it takes us into psychic vampires, it takes us into the it takes us into all of these things that are on, beyond the bounds. That, that if we stay in our little centralized, perfectly protected reality, would be scary because we, they're the unknown. But you open the curtain and you know, you're not just looking at ghosts. Once you start looking at ghosts on that curtain, you're looking at everything else, you're looking at what else has to, can be there. And as we start that dialogue, we learn what is real and we learn to discern what is just the sensational bit that got us interested in the first place, that was that, that woo woo moment. One of these shows was shown to you, so scan, what brought you to your home, now they've done my time. Uh, yeah, it would hurt somewhat, but it wouldn't wipe out interest in the paranormal realm because people have their individual experience. Because if you don't have a personal ghost encounter or a ghost story, you know somebody that does. That has been with us since pre history and it will continue so there'll always be that kind of interest in the paranormal. I don't think that 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 they can do, but you know, and then scientists are talking more about it on the news that now there's gonna be a little bit more research they can see if they can find the things at the bottom of it and give them the answers to them. From game shows, well, that was proved to be fraudulent. That didn't stop game shows from being broadcast, and uh, a lot of people don't realize that when Gilligan Island was a current series, and then when syndication was so popular, the Coast Guard was actually receiving reports that don't you know that the people, the seven castaways in this island, and they desperately need help. What are you doing about it? And right, so we have survivors. <laughs> One fall to another. Exactly. But to answer the question, I think that a lot of people will be heartbroken to see idols uh, keep up, so to speak, which, as uh, Brian points out, is not more than itself because funk is funk. So, but uh, I think that there are always people who are, as it's been brought up, are going to be legitimately experiencing these things and it is a reality I and mean, I know it's a reality uh, Brian knows, Lloyd knows, I mean all of us have experienced in, it in one point or another and it's always going to be happening there are always always going to be people that need help maybe we'll go back to all our original roots and um, right let's hope and uh, wouldn't hurt us sometimes to go back to where we started from and just uh, do it from the bottom of our hearts, where we're led. Big problem, uh, matter of fact, if you look at it, it's one of those shows uh, that he was over England with Groovy Bacon and he became more popular than ever. So it doesn't take a million dollars. Okay. okay.
Would you ladies introduce yourselves, please? Yes, sir. I am Katrina Weidman from the Paranormal Research Society and AMU Paranormal State. And I am Heather Chatty from AMU Paranormal State, and I'm also a member of the Penn State Paranormal Research Society. And tell us, how's the convention been going for you gals? The convention, we are at Unicon 7 right now, which is hosted in State College, the birthplace of the Paranormal Research Society, and it is going extremely well. We have yeah, sent a panel, great. kind of a behind the scenes of Paranormal State, where um, attendees have asked us questions, including how much money does it take to make an episode, and you know, do you guys fight behind the scenes? And it went very, very well. Everyone had great questions, and there was a lot of knowledge, and we've had really awesome speakers like Keith Thompson and you. your brother Carl and your mm-hmm. wife, and people are, I've been hearing positive, positive feedback from everybody saying, you know, I've gotten such great information, and I want to start my own meeting, so it's wonderful, and it's been awesome so far. It's also been really hectic because we're all running around, you know, setting yeah. up the workshops and everything, making sure the speakers have what they need. Um, but it's, it's turned out pretty well. I, it all, you know, it's always good. Yeah, I love it. Great. Great. How about you, Keith? Oh, it's been going fine. We've been having a blast. We've been very, very busy rushing here and there, and that's what a conference is all about, yeah. meeting great people like you, yeah. Joe. So, although we've met before, of course, we've worked together before. So how's things going on the show Paranormal State to you two? It's been really it's well. This whole summer, we spent the whole summer traveling. Mostly we were on the West Coast, in the Midwest, but um, it's been going great. Yeah. We finally had like a little break before you know, Oh yeah. We were filming again soon. Oh, well, I did the sleep. <laughs> yeah, that was it. We've been very sleep deprived for these last couple months. Right, I can imagine. It's been pretty hectic, but we kept on each other's good sides. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun, a lot of work too. Yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of traveling. Yeah, and we're very it's cool because we're very committed to keeping the organization in our hands and the people in our hands. Mm-hmm. And it'd be a lot easier to handle that production, but right. we like it ourselves. So I mean, that includes before going on in the case, you know, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. in the office, and right. then going home to pack and getting on a 5 a.m. flight. So oh, it's been great. Hectic, but we're, <laughs> we're doing it. Yep. All right, let's do the polls. All I right. Say, Hello, <laughs> ghosts are near. Hello, Ghost Sarnier. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Hello, Nathan Mayer. Hello, uh, Ghost Sarnier audience. <laughs> How are you doing at Unicon? I'm doing great. It's been very busy, very hectic. And if I went on any more stuff, I wouldn't have time to eat. <laughs> What's some of your adventures then? I went on a ghost tour. Hey, I attended at least 10 seminars so far, and I enjoy them very much and picking up a lot of good information. Excellent. Well, great. We hope to see more of you at Unicon. I hope I can do that. And also in the studio of Ghost Arnia, where you're very much appreciated. Yes, and I'm graphic assistant graphic person. Great. Thanks very much. You're welcome. All right. Guys, could you introduce yourself, please? I'm Topher Young. You know, con manager, yeah, con manager, rocking guy, yeah, um, yeah. play. and there. Uh, of course, you're both associated with TRS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And you've been on the series, Paranormal State. A couple of, a couple of episodes. Yeah. yeah. And tell us what's been going like at you know, Uh For me, it's been pretty busy. Uh, running around, making sure things get done on time. Uh, at least started somewhat on time. Uh, making sure everyone's happy. Right. Overall, it's just been productive. You've had a lot of responsibility, obviously. Yeah, I've been Please pretty surprised, much but, uh, sure. every year. Right. I know someone's got to do it. Last year was 30. I did the last few years with 30. They were bored with Brian doing it. So, someone eventually is going to be completely surprised at all. But, when we do it, it's not for us. It's for the paranormal field to come together and learn from each other. So. Right. Completed. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm good. <laughs> After uh, like popping these caffeine mints like candy, yeah. you got to do what you got to do, right? Rocking. Yeah. Hey. Um, I think I've developed a blister, you know, getting some speed walking. But other than that, I'm having a uh, good time. I think everybody's fairly pleased. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, what's the hit for PRS in parallel states? Um, apparently, in 2.5, which I found out about yesterday with oh, everybody right. else. So, right. I was. Um, you know, kind of cried in the corner for a little bit. Just because it, it's so exhausting that we, we're still recharging. All right, right. Fantastic. But um, many good things. 
That's what I'm hoping to send in the future. That's what we're looking forward to. Do you have anything to add to that? Like a head for PRS and turn on the stage? I mean, I think. Mean, like you like Josh said, it's probably going to be ready. Also, a good thing, not just for us, but I think the paranormal field, I think there's a lot of many good things. It's, and it's starting, starting here in you know, the paranormal congress. Right. Very, very good about that, the paranormal congress. Uh, the paranormal congress is really it's more of like a meeting of all the different groups. We, we invited paranormal research groups, paranormal investigators, uh, scientists, researchers from all different areas. And they came together to try to start almost, like, it was a congress meeting, but it was start just looking into the standards and ethics of the paranormal, the structure the paranormal field a little bit better than what it already is. I mean, for anyone that's been in the field long enough, they know it's the chaos, uh, the chaotic moment, you know, the media right. bliss and stuff like that, and it's actually focused more on the research, the, the education, the moving forward and actually legitimizing the field a little bit more than, actually a lot more than what it already is. So, the paranormal congress, a lot of groups came together, a lot of them were very, very excited about pushing forward and, and and pursuing something more than what we're doing now. So, Parallel Congress is an idea that started two years ago, something we wanted to do last year, it didn't, didn't fall in the right places at that time, but we pushed to do it this year, and as we did it, everyone's really, really proud of it. It looks like it's really successful. I was unable to attend it because, you know, I'm content, I'm coming to you But really, I mean, I attended, I think it was very, I think it's wonderful. Right. I'm almost repeating myself. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the key is it's, it's not up to us. Oh, I mean, well, it's, it's not up to everyone to be part of one person. Uh, the idea is supposed to keep going. You can't stop here. If it stops at Unicon, it's not going to get better. So this idea is supposed to continue to spread. The Congress moves, keeps moving forward. It starts here and continues. So come next year, we're going to talk about it again, see the progress that we made. We might even have smaller meetings in between them. So to continue pursuing legitimizing the field and pursuing more education, more research, and just almost building a professional relationship with everyone. I mean, there's so much animosity right now. There's so much competition, uh, territoriality. And it's, it's kind of ridiculous almost to the point that like, we should be working together to try to understand the research that we're doing. We're all doing the same research. Right. We might have different methods, sure. But no one knows which way is right, which way is wrong. Might as well talk about it and try to work on it. Like we can Very well said. I think that's really what it's all about, isn't it? Well, thank you very much. No thank you very much. And you, I hope you can hear the rest of your comments. Certainly yes. will. Say hello to our Ghost Army audience. Hello. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm here with Christopher Moon. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. How are you enjoying your time? It's been fun so far. We've had uh, two exciting days and still one to go. So, yeah. <laughs> been busy, right? It's been very busy. Tell what you've been uh, talking about and demonstrating. I've uh, uh, been doing a lot of town stuff in the day, right? Uh, we've done a couple of lectures on it, where we have to talk to other people. And I've been doing a lot of things so far. I went back to the room. The opposite of the one that just went on. Right. Yes, that was very significant. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hi, I'm Constantino, the uh, author of Six Occulto and uh, Practicing Occulto. <laughs> Are you having a great time at Unicon? Yeah, it's been pretty great. I did a couple of talks, had a lot of fun. I attended lots of other uh, great talks, which is always good with these kinds of things, get new ideas. Well, you're consistently interesting, so we're always glad to have you here with us, whatever conference we're on. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. We're here with Michelle Bellanger. Now, Michelle, you're always here at this convention at Unicon every year, yeah. and it's great to have you here. And uh, tell about some of your experience here, what you've been doing. Oh, well, it's been an amazing convention. Uh, the Journal of State kids had asked me, some college kids and others, you know, only maybe 10 years younger than me. Uh, <clears throat> The, the paranormal state team asked me to do a presentation on alternative investigation, and so uh, I've been I've had two two goes at that. Where we've kind of done a survey of uh, not scientific and not traditional Christian, but like all the other different belief systems and their attitudes and ideas of spirits and how they deal with spirits, uh, exorcism, cleansing houses, things like that. I've had a really good response to that. It's, uh, I think people come in thinking it's going to be more hands-on, and it's really when you're like, oh, well, how about all the other stuff? It ends up being really like in an hour, it's a, a class survey of all the world religions. Right. Um, but it, it's that kind of academic stuff that I can really sink my teeth into. And they let me do a presentation on uh, the Blood of Angels, uh -huh. which is, I, I've got a fascination for the Watcher Angel myth, from so the Book of Enoch and the Nephilim. And this was just, I was nervous at first because some of the stuff that I would have to present as background um, on the idea of demons and Satan and the devil that appears in the Old and New Testament for some people might challenge some of their ideas of how the Bible really is. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I have to bring up like the documentary hypothesis and some stuff that, where it's like I'm not challenging it as divinely inspired. I am challenging the possibility of scribal error in translation. Mm -hmm. And then bringing in the idea that a lot of, the, I, a lot of our concepts of the, the war in heaven and the fallen angels happen outside of the biblical tradition. You won't find that told in the Bible story. You see hints of it here and there and you see some of the stuff in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament, it's just kind of hinted at and there's echoes, and most of that is in extra-biblical text. So we went and kind of dug our, dug our fingers into that and looked into that tradition, and I was really surprised with how very receptive everybody was to that. And then I uh, have had a booth, and for the first time, I a lot of people here at Unicon know me as a psychic vampire. It's the, the first couple of books that I did, I end up teaching people about people who take energy, how to protect themselves, how to recognize a psychic vampire. And my first works were primarily helping other people like myself to recognize what they were and control it and, you know, not be universal pains in the neck. Right. Uh, <laughs> But I also do a lot of energy work, and with the appearances I've done on Paranormal State now, people have recognized me more as someone who can go into a house and do a reading like Chip Coffee. I can do that kind of like woo-woo psychic thing. Right. And so 
I taught in a very private venue this particular style of energy work for about the past 10 years. And because it's a little different from Reiki and a little different from Qigong, I've not really trotted it out anywhere. And this was the first convention where I offered uh, an energy body reading in the style that I do. And I had been overwhelmed with like, people are like, oh my god, this is so new, this is really cool, and oh my god, I feel so great. And it's very gratifying to have an open, receptive, uh, and very open-minded audience. Mm -hmm. And it's so diverse. I mean, I, I love this place because it brings such diversity together. And people who are willing to go, you know, I might have a different belief than you, but we have this common ground in our interest in the paranormal, so let's open a dialogue, and I'll learn from you, and I'll learn from you, and we can come away enriched because we're willing to talk and share. And that, that's something I really love about Unicon. Great. Fantastic. Well, you're always fascinating to talk to and to watch, Michelle, and uh, so glad to see you every year here. Oh, hey, I look forward to seeing you guys. There's never a time to really hang out. Fantastic. Fantastic lady, Michelle Belanger. Uh, uh, the, the first group I went in from 10 to 11, we got off to a slow start as far as actually capturing activity. We started off by walking around the building, and we want to explain some of the brief history of this uh, of the house, the structure, and then we went inside. Uh, the uh, legend is that a young boy actually died there sometime in the later 1800s. Or actually, I think it was the, actually the early 20th century. There was a, an impoverished boy, pretty much a homeless boy, and he was being fed by some of the students there. And it was then a girls' dormitory. Well, the headmistress suspected that they were up to something, and she was very strict. So the little boy was outside on a window ledge. We don't know if it was upstairs or downstairs. Somebody told me it was the upstairs on a ledge. And they were giving him food and keeping him warm. Well, it was a very cold winter's night and the headmistress returned unexpectedly, so the little boy had to stay out on the ledge for two hours while she waited because the headmistress was getting suspicious. When the headmistress finally left, the girl hurriedly opened the window to bring the boy in, and he had died of exposure. Now, that's probably a true story because I've heard it from several sources. Okay. Mm -hmm. Listen, me, here we are. Hopefully soon to be at St. Alfonso's Pancake Breakfast. <laughs> Right. 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 Lorraine Warren. <laughs> <laughs> I keep seeing her. Huh? We'll okay, see you, Tony. You know. I look forward to seeing you both again very soon. Okay. Thank you, dear. Right, very good. Have you on our show. Okay, okay. we will. We, we will. will. God okay. bless. God bless you too, honey. God Bye -bye. bless you, honey. That's our show. Hope you enjoyed the footage. Thank you, studio audience and uh, my illustrious co-host. And... Here's to our friends in L.A., Craig and the gang. Thanks for watching. We appreciate your support. Yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words, people, before well, we sign off? I enjoyed watching oh, the yeah. Unicon footage. It, it really was a great time. Yep. Well, we look forward to having you both on again. Okay? Absolutely. We look forward to it as well. Together we have to be. Oh, <laughs> not again. I think it works. I don't